Hey, what's up? My name is Sacklos, and today we're going to be doing a tutorial on homing projectiles. This should be a pretty fun tutorial on more than just a homing projectile, but also a very pretty projectile that we'll be making in the process. But first, really quickly, I want to show you my uh, my combat world that I've been making recently, which I've kind of got the, uh, the homing projectile from it. But um, this world, pretty cool, at least I think so. It's got some cool mobility stuff like ground pounding, multiple jumps. If you ground pound and jump right away, some from Sunset Overdrive, you get a super jump. Uh, I've got these like a basic attack and a little projectile. But if I was to do attack B projectile, I do a quick little light combo. And if I was to do like Y, X, and y, hold Y, let me do that faster, I do a spray attack. So little combos like that. Most importantly, I got this weapon wheel of spells. So I got a fireball, electricity, and this void thing, which they're all very cool. But I'm gonna be showing you the fireball today, which that's what we're going to be making. So as you can see, we've got our little group of uh, goblins. They all have 30 health apiece. And without particularly aiming at them, we're going to lay waste to them with very little effort on my part, which is pretty cool. There we go. So, let's get into making that. Now, we're not going to be working with my souped out character. We're going to be working with a uh, fairly simple character with the, um, uh, what's it called? The Adventurer Brain. Where did I put these guys? Oh, over here. So, let me disable my character, my awesome crazy souped out character. Turn his brain to false. And we're gonna go over here to my new little hero and let's turn his brain on. There we go, so first things first, we need to go into his brain and go to brain gallery and make it third person adventure. You can add this to whatever world you're currently making, but this is what I'm gonna be starting with. Next, let's actually make our projectile. I'm gonna turn snap on to make sure all of our projectile pieces line up. First things first, I'm gonna grab the most basic projectile the fireball. Now you should probably be very familiar with this. I'm going to scale it down to 50%, drop it near the ground, place it. Next, I'm going to put the red spark, and I'm going to scale this to two, uh, 150%. Place it right inside of it like that. And finally, we're going to do the fireball launch. I'm going to rotate this around, leave it the same scale, and put it on top of it. Oh, that's a too used to playing with Forge and the Far Cry map editor. There we go. So we have those three projectiles. Let's do a multi-edit. Select that. Looks like we also picked up this log. Now to look around. Do we pick up any trees, any other characters? Looks good. I'm gonna glue the objects. And we're gonna go into the brain of these objects. First thing we're gonna do, we're going to assign this a team. Team equals team one. Next, what we're going to do, because I want this to kind of move around wildly, is for the duration of point two, we're going to have it move with flying in direction random vector. Then, after point two, we are going to have it um, when uh, objects closer than, oh, let's do 10. Objects closer than 10 are enemies. We are going to move toward it with flying at speed. Let's do 30. 30 seems like a pretty good speed for this projectile. Actually, let's do 20. So it's slower and you can see it better. Next, we're gonna copy and paste that same line, except this time we're going to put not in front of it. Now, you also could do when uh, objects farther than 10 are enemies. However, I was running into some odd issues when I did it that way. So when not objects closer than 10 are enemies, 
that was more stable for me, weirdly enough. But what we're going to do is move in with flying in direction creator uh, camera forward at speed 20. Now what I love about this is that first uh, you can kind of curve the shots that you take when you fire this projectile by moving the camera around assuming that it's not homing into an enemy. Secondly um, it's cool because you don't always have to be facing your target to aim at them accurately. Your camera has to be facing them, which is more common. Like if you're jumping or if you're doing a maneuver, uh, you're more likely to be looking at your enemy with your camera than you are to actually be facing them accurately with your player. So, this is pretty fun. At least I think so. And lastly, when detect... Oh. No, no. When detect enemies. Gonna create another child line of code. We're going to start to. Oh, not heal. I hate to heal them. That'd be terrible. Damage it. Mm, let's do five. So we can take multiple hits on them. Damage at five. We're going to play the effect. Fireworks explosion. Yeah, there we go. Fireworks explosion. Scale it up to two. Now the reason, because I'm also going to be destroying this object. Under destroy, there is destroy with effect. And then I could have done firework candle explosion right here. Except I wanted to have the fireworks candle scaled up. So that's why I did it this way. Now everything looks to be in order. Let's change a couple things and its properties. First, let's go to brain and make it a template. Second, let's go to sensors, turn the detect sensor up. And we need to shrink this detection sensor way down. If I was to set this projectile to have to bump the enemy before it attacked him, it would regularly miss or stall out in front of them. So instead, let me turn the grid off. We're going to create a detection field this big. If the enemy is within here, it explodes and damages them, which is much more likely to get a hit. You can shrink or expand this uh, field if you want, depending on how much uh, how much freedom you want to give your, uh, your attack. Now, we're actually going to code it into our player. So, when right trigger, we're going to shoot uh, this projectile at speed 30, just to, uh, no, 20, just to reinforce the speed. We are also going to have its lifetime be oh, 06, and we're going to... Make it bouncy, because that makes it a lot more fun and energetic. Um, and we need to do the launch frequency. I find two or three is pretty good for this kind of projectile. If you're trying to mimic a gun, you want to get up there with 10, 15, 20. But we're not mimicking a gun. This is like a spell. So we want it to fire quickly, but not like a full auto gun. There we go. That's looking pretty good. Let's give it a whirl. If you guys are hearing lots of voices in the background, uh, we're having family stay with us for a few days, weeks, maybe a month. Oh, that's my little mini tutorial. Let's skip through that. It's cool though. Because, well, that was part of the tutorial. Ignore that. But, um, if you hear voices in the background, that's my family and their kids. So, um, yeah. I'm doing my best to try to make it quiet, but you know how it goes. So, let's get by our goblins and fire our lovely projectile. Looks like it's working wonderfully. See? It's taking more hits than before because we coded it to lower damage. But we can code it to higher damage if we so wished. So, I hope this tutorial is helpful. Um, hmm. Interesting. 
projectiles weren't going off. I suspect... Okay, my cat just hopped up on my desk. I suspect it's because I made this detection radius a little bit too small. Let's bump up the size of that a little bit. Really quickly try this again. Skip through my mini tutorial. There we go. Then the screen gets shaky. Don't ask why the screen is shaking. It just does. There we go. That's working much better. So, there we go. It's a much more impressive projectile that you can use in your world. It's more complex, but also gives you uh, it's a very cool feel to it. So, hope you guys enjoy the tutorial. I will see you guys.